but the real Kingston Town's going to street them. It's history at Randwick. Superimposers come from last. Back to back Cox Plates for the champion Mayor Sunline, but a champion becomes a legend. And that's 21 today. Hi, I'm Dave Carlson and welcome to The Racing Wiz, where soon we are going to find the wizard of Australian horse racing trivia. Our two contestants tonight will compete against each other for a chance to make it through to the semi-finals and the possibility of a spot in our grand final show, with some great prizes up for grabs. It's time now to meet our contestants. And first up from Redcliffe in Perth in Western Australia, it's Jason Lincoln. Jason, welcome to The Racing Wiz. Thanks for having me, Dave. Jason, you're a harness racing steward, Gloucester Park. That's right. So it was big earlier on this year with the Inter Dominion. Yeah, very exciting time. Um, and certainly having a local winner certainly um, helped add to the atmosphere on the, on the night. And a big summer to come. Oh, definitely. Um, obviously, Inter Dominion winner will be resuming in the next few weeks. So, yeah, there's going to be a lot of interest over the summer. And your grandfather, I believe, trained greyhounds. Yeah, that's right. He held a licence for well over 60 years. and. Um, I guess that's where my passion for racing began. Well, Jason, all the best tonight on the racing wheels. Thanks, Dave. Time now to meet our second contestant from Bella Vista in Sydney. He's a carpenter. Please welcome Andrew Olini. Thanks for having us, Dave. Now, Andrew, Kingston Town, like so many of us, your favourite horse. What do you remember most about the King? Oh, well, look, first memory is that's the first time I ever went to the races. I was 12. Um, a friend of mine's mum took us and um, yeah, he won by you know four lengths the spring champion stakes and from then on I was I was right into racing. Well, the king got me in two. I backed him at his first win, 33 to 1. He didn't start at that after that. No, he was short all the time, yeah, but he's got great horse. Andrew, all the best on the racing whiz tonight. Thanks, Dave. Okay. Jason and Andrew are going to go head to head tonight in the racing whiz and compete for these great prizes. Tonight's winner on the Racing Wiz will receive a $500 tab.com today U voucher. The four highest qualifying round winners progress through to the semi-finals, where those winners will battle it out in the grand final of Series 1 of the Racing Wiz for the major prize of $10,000 in cash, courtesy of tab.com today U, Sky Racing and the Racing Wiz. Yes, $10,000 heading the way of our eventual grand final winner. First up in the Racing Wiz tonight, it's Horses for Courses, where our players have selected a racing category they think is their strongest. Ten questions to each player, 20 points for a correct answer, no penalties for an incorrect one. Well, Jason, uh, just like Andrew, you love Kingston Town and your category is Kingston Town. Quite a coincidence. Ready to play? Sure. Question number one, who was Kingston Town's trainer? CJ Smith. Correct. Which mayor is Kingston Town's dam? Ada Hunter. Correct. Which race caller stated Kingston Town can't win in the call of the 1982 Cox Plate? Bill Collins. Correct. Which jockey rode Kingston Town to his second Cox Plate victory in 1981? Ron Quinton. Correct. What was the name of Kingston Town's last race run at Ascot in Perth? The Western Mail Classic. Correct. What was the length of Kingston Town's winning streak when racing in Sydney? 21. Correct. Which horse beat Kingston Town in the 1979 Victoria Derby? Big print. Correct. Question eight. In which race in 1982 did Kingston Town's Sydney winning streak come to an end with a fourth placed finish? The Chelmsford Stakes. That is correct. Who rode Kingston Town in his last race? Malcolm Johnson. Correct. And finally, question 10 for 10 out of 10. What was the final race Kingston Town won as a three-year-old? The Queensland Derby. Jason, congratulations. 10 out of 10. Thanks, Dave. Jason has 200 points. OK, Andrew, it's your turn now. You've selected the Golden Slipper as yep. your category. Yes, Are right. you ready? Yep, ready. All right, question number one. Over what distance is the Golden Slipper run? 1,200 metres. Correct. Who was the sire of the first five Golden Slipper winners? Star Kingdom. Mighty Star Kingdom is correct. Who rode Catbird to victory in the 1999 Golden Slipper? Mark de Montfort. Correct. Which horse gave Clary Connors his fourth Golden Slipper win in 2000? After the door, yeah. Bell to door. After the buzzer, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. Which horse did Larry Olsen ride to victory in the 1988 Golden Slipper? Starwatch. Our very own Larry, correct. Angus Armanasco trained which horse to Golden Slipper success in 1981? Full on aces. Correct. Which horse is the only Golden Slipper winner to have started in a Melbourne Cup? 
Sky High. Which horse gave Lenny Beasley his second win in the Golden Slipper? Stratum. Correct, two to go. Which horse, the first to complete the two-year-old Triple Crown, did George Moore ride to victory in the 1970 Slipper? Baguette. Baguette is correct. And finally, Andrew, which horse was the last filly to win the Golden Slipper? Forensics. Incorrect, it was Crystal Lily. Yes, the ill-fated Crystal Lily. Seven out of 10 right there, Andrew. You're on 140. Jason is leading on 200 points. Our last question in round one is, what's my name? Where well, the answer could be horse or human. First in with the buzzer, gets to answer. If you get it wrong, your opponent gets the rest of the clues. There's 50 points up for grabs, so let's check the buzzers are working. Jason? Andrew? OK, here is your question. What's my name? A son of Zabil, I was born in 1993 and defied my staying pedigree to win as a two-year-old. I returned in... Octagonal. Incorrect. Andrew, you get the rest of the clues. I returned in the autumn as a three-year-old to run a close second in the Canterbury Guineas before an unlucky fourth in a rough AJC derby. My three-year-old season concluded with a resounding Frank Packer plate victory. I won the show county quality. Might and power. Might and power is absolutely correct. 50 points for you, Andrew, and well done. Let's have a look at the scores now. And we have Andrew on 190. Jason, your nose is just in front with 200. OK, we'll be back with round two of the Racing Whiz in just a moment. But as we go to the break, let's relive Might and Power in his heyday. He's kicked out by two. Northern Drake is chasing home hard on the outside after the leader and Tycoon Melody battling strongly. It's Might and Power, the leader. Northern Drake a length and a half away coming home, but Might and Power, the big champ, the king, joins the greats of the turf and Might and Power's won it from Northern Drake. Third home. Welcome back to the Racing Wiz. Jason from WA is taking on Andrew from New South Wales. Andrew's on 190 points and Jason is in the lead with 200. So just 10 points in it as we get into the second round. Time now for At The Track. And our three categories on the board tonight are... Doombin Cup, Black Caviar and Melbourne Cup Jockeys. Well, Jason, uh, you are in the lead and therefore you have control of the board. If you answer incorrectly or pass, well, Andrew will get the chance to play. Where would you like to start? Uh, well, we'll start with Doombin Cup. Thanks, Dave. Doombin Cup for 50. Which horse won three straight Doombin Cups in the early 90s? Rough Habit. Correct. Melbourne Cup jockeys or Black Caviar? Uh, we'll go Black Caviar. OK, Black Caviar for 50 points. It's racing recall time. So you're included in this too, Andrew. Take a look at your monitors and watch this race. I'll ask a question afterwards. First in with the buzzer gets to answer the question. Roll the tape. But in the white jacket, beginning to try and get on terms with Black Caviar. Luke Nolan shakes up Black Caviar. What can she find? Soul went very fast. Black Caviar takes it up now. Chased by Restia Dage. The question is, which horse did Black Caviar narrowly defeat in the Diamond Jubilee Stakes in Ascot, England? Jason. Moonlight Cloud. Moonlight Cloud is correct. Another 50 points. OK, Melbourne Cup jockeys for 50. Which jockey won the Melbourne Cup four times between 1974 and 1979? Harry White. Harry White is correct. At the track, 75 points. Which category would you like? Uh, we'll go Doombin Cup this day. Doombin Cup for 70 points, Jason. From the horse's mouth. Andrew, once again, you get to play. We're going to hear right now from one of our celebrity quiz masters. First in with the buzzer gets to answer the question. Hi, I'm Greg Radley. Which horse did Hugh Bowman ride to victory in the 2004 Doombin Cup? Jason. Defire. Defire is absolutely correct, 75 points. 
OK, now, Black Caviar or Melbourne Cup Trials? We'll go Black Caviar, Dave. Black Caviar for 75. Jason, which horse has finished second to Black Caviar four times in Group 1 races? A hay list. Hay list is correct for Johnny McNair. Melbourne Cup Jockeys for 75. Our very own Larry Olsen won the Melbourne Cup in 1987 aboard which horse? Kenzai. Kenzai is correct. We move now to 100 points. Which category? Well, Keep it consistent, Dave. We'll go Doombin Cup. OK, Jason, which horse won the 1946 Doombin Cup, part of a 15-race winning streak? Burnborough. Burnborough is correct. Black Caviar or Melbourne Cup, Jason? Uh, we'll go Black Caviar, thanks, Dave. Jason, who rode Black Caviar to her first Group 1 victory? Ben Mellum. Ben Mellum is correct. And Melbourne Cup jockeys, you're going for a clean sweep of the board, Jason. Jockey Jim Johnson won the first of his three Melbourne Cups in 1963 aboard which horse? No. OK, Andrew, now your chance to answer. Bloody hard one. Um, 63, get him, get him. Get him, get him is absolutely correct. So 100 points there for you, Andrew. OK, that clears the board for At The Track in round two. Andrew on 290 points. Jason, your panel's in front with 775. Now, not only do our players get a chance to play for $10,000 in cash in the grand final, they also get the chance to visit the Wizard's Den to win some great prizes. So let's see what's on offer tonight. Tonight in the Wizard's Den, Jason has the chance to buy this Samsung Galaxy Tab 2, valued at more than $500. The Galaxy Tab 2 packs multimedia, communication and internet functionality in one highly portable personal tablet device. Powered by the latest Android operating systems, it provides seamless performance and great all-round usability. This Samsung Galaxy Tab 2 is valued at more than $500, and is courtesy of JB Hi-Fi and The Racing Whiz. Jason, you currently lead by 485 points. This is a wonderful piece of technology, this Samsung tablet, the Samsung Tab 2. 485 in the lead, you can have it for 350 points. Uh, it is a wonderful prize, Dave, but I've got a lot of respect for Andrew. And, um, Probably a bit pricey for me at this stage. You'll still be in the lead. You've got a healthy lead. They're wonderful things. I use them. I use the Samsung Tab 2. You can do your form guide on it. You can have a bet on it. You can do whatever on it. As enticing as it is to be like you, Dave, oh, I'm going to have to let it slide. 300 points. Uh, no. Last offer, 275. You'll still be in the lead by 210. OK, you've taught me into it. OK, you've sold. It's sold to you, the Samsung tablet, for 275 points. Well done, Jason. That's your prize from the Racing Wiz and JB Hi-Fi. Thanks very much, Dave. Enjoy it. So after the Wizard's Den, Jason's lead now stands at 210 points. Andrew, 290. Jason on 500. All right, now it's time to play On The Clock. As many questions as possible in 90 seconds, first in with the buzzer gets to answer. 20 points for a correct answer, but you'll lose 20 points if you get it wrong. Ready, gentlemen? Yes. 90 seconds on the clock. Your time starts now. Which famous brothers were known as the Chicken Kings? Jason. The Inghams. Bob and Jack Ingham. Bob and Jack, correct. The 2007 Epsom handicap was not held due to what? Jason. EI. Equine Influenza, correct. Which trainer prepared weekend hustler, Quartzer? Andrew. Ross McDonald. Correct. If you were going to the Twin Hill races, which state would you be in? <laughs> Queensland. Which horse trained by Cliff Brown won the 1997 Rose Hill Guineas? Andrew. Tarpon Lane. Correct. Who was the champion jockey that rode four Golden Slipper winners during the 1980s? Andrew. Uh, Nick Tittman. Ron Quinton. Which horse trained and bred by Tommy Smith won the 1987 Orlando Classic? Andrew. Bounding away. Correct. Who was the jockey on board the 2012 Golden Rose winner, Epaulette? Andrew. Uh, Tommy Berry. Correct. Which horse trained by Graham Hegney won back-to-back -back Cox Plates? Jason. Tobin Bronze. Tobin Bronze, correct. 2011 Meyer Classic winner, Hurtle Myrtle, was ridden by who? 
Andrew. Damien Oliver. Correct. Which Kiwi horse trained by Murray Baker won the 2011 Underwood Stakes? Andrew. Lion Tamer. Correct. Michael Rod and Chris Waller combined to win the 2012 Jason. Metal Bender. Correct. Which horse trained by Ross McDonald was crowned Australian Horse of the Year? Jason. Weekend Hustler. Correct. Who was the trainer of 1999? And the time is up. There goes the buzzer for on the clock. So let's check out the scoreboard at the end of round two. 390 points for Andrew. Jason, you're still in the lead with 600. But Andrew is getting a little bit closer. We'll be back in just a moment for our third and final round. But right now, here's your chance to be a part of the Racing Whiz with our home viewer quiz. Each week on the Racing Whiz, five lucky winners who answer the question correctly will receive a $100 tab.com today U voucher, with all weekly winners going into the draw for our major prize, a trip for two to the 2013 Melbourne Cup, with airfares, accommodation and entrance tickets included. The prize is valued at more than $3,000. This week's question is, in which year did Farlap win the Melbourne Cup? Call 1902-222-000 with your answer now. Lines close at midnight on Sunday night, with our winners announced on next Monday's show. Be part of the Racing Whiz and your chance to win a trip for two to the 2013 Melbourne Cup. Welcome back to the Racing Wiz as we enter the home straight for our third and final round. The scores at the moment sees Andrew on 390 points and Jason currently leading with 600. We're heading back to at the track, only now our points have doubled. So our contestants, Andrew and Jason, are playing for 100, 150 and 200 points. We've got three new categories. Let's have a look at them. George Moore, Cox Plate winners, and race names. Jason, you're in control of the board, but don't forget an incorrect answer could give the chance to Andrew to take control. All right, uh, where would you like to start for 100 points? Uh, I'll start with Cox Plate winners, please, Dave. All right, Jason, <clears throat> which horse is the oldest winner of the Cox Plate? Fields of Omar. Correct. George Moore or race names? Let's go George Moore. Jason, George Moore started riding in which Australian state? Queensland. Correct. And now for 100 points, it's race names. It's racing recall time. So Andrew, you get the chance to uh, test your buzzer out on this as well. What we want you to do is take a look once again at your monitor and watch this race. I'll ask a question afterwards. First in with the buzzer gets to answer the question. Let's roll the tape. The outside and then Apache King at the 200. Brewers after Mr. Nelson. Mr. Nelson about three quarters in front. Brew's coming home a little bit the better. Brew and Mr. Nelson from Yammer the outside. It's Brew and Mr. Nelson. Brew went home. Gentlemen, the question is, when Brew won this race in 2000, it was called the Saab Quality. What's its original name, Jason? The Hotham. The Hotham handicap is absolutely correct. 100 points. OK, we move to 150. George Moore, Cox Plate winners or race uh, names? Cox Plate winners, thanks, Dave. OK, Jason. Sunline was beaten by which horse in 2001 when chasing a third straight Cox Plate? She was beaten by Northerly. Northerly is correct. George Moore or race names? We'll go George Moore. OK, George Moore for 150 points from the horse's mouth. So you're included in this as well, Andrew. Let's hear from another one of our celebrity quiz masters. First in with the buzzer gets to answer this question. Hi, I'm Corey Brown. Inspired by his soft hands, what was George Moore's nickname? Jason. Cotton Fingers. Cotton Fingers it was. Congratulations, 150 points. Now, race names. What was the Craig Lee Stakes renamed in 2007? The Maccabi Diva. Maccabi Diva, absolutely correct. 150 points. Now for 200, which is your category? Uh, Cox Plate winners, thanks, Dave. Jason, which Australian Horse of the Year won the 1990 Cox Plate? Better loosen up. Correct. George Moore or race names? Uh, George Moore. Jason, on which horse did George Moore win 19 races, including the 1957 AJC Derby? Tullock. The mighty Tullock. 
and race names for 200. You're going for a clean sweep. Run at Rose Hill, the Golden Rose Stakes was known as what until 2003? Peter Pan Stakes. The Peter Pan Stakes is absolutely correct. You have cleaned the board, so let's check out the scoreboard after part two of At The Track. 390 points for Andrew and Jason, you have 1,950 points. We're approaching the winning post now with just one question left in tonight's game as we get set to play Going For Broke. On the Going For Broke wheel tonight are six different categories. So let's spin the wheel to find out where our question will come from. Our category tonight, Going For Broke, is John Hawkes. And our players can risk as much or as little of their bank as they liked as they like. So the scores at the moment, we have Andrew on 390 points and Jason is well in the lead on 1950. Gentlemen, please write down the amount of points you would like to risk. Okay, gentlemen, you've locked in the amount you're willing to risk. Here is your going for broke question. Which horse did John Hawkes train to win the 1972 VRC Oaks? Please write your answer down. We'll reveal it and the amount of points you've risked in just a moment. Okay, your time is up. The question in Going For Broke was, which horse did John Hawkes train to win the 1972 VRC Oaks? Andrew first, please reveal how much you risked. You've risked a lot, 390 points. Okay, Andrew, please reveal your answer. The question was absolutely correct. Your answer, Toltrice. 780 points for you. Okay, Jason, please reveal your answer. Toltrice is correct. Now, remember the final four go into the semi final, so let's see how many points you've risked. They are critical in the racing whiz. You've risked 500 points. Congratulations, Jason. 2,450 points. You are tonight's winner of the Racing Wheels. A job well done. Well, Andrew, thanks very yeah. much for playing. I hope you enjoyed the experience. Yeah, no, thanks, Dave. Thanks for having us, and congratulations to Jason. Good well on done, you. mate. Appreciate it. You don't go away empty-handed. Let's have a look what you take away. All contestants on the Racing Whiz take away this great prize pack from Sky Racing, including a polo shirt, sports cap, key ring and an umbrella. Losing qualifying round winners also receive a $200 voucher from tab.com.au, while our winners receive a $500 voucher and the chance to win their way through to the grand final, where they'll play for $10,000 in cash. Good luck, keep chipping away at your carpentry business and all the best for the rest of the Spring Carnival. Yeah, thanks, David. Thank no you. No worries at all. Congratulations once again, Jason. We're going to check out our overall leaderboard now and see exactly where you stand. You scored so well, you are now on top with 2,450. Don't forget the four highest winners go into our semi-finals. So all the best. Thanks, Dave. OK, that is it for another Racing Whiz. Until next time we meet, I'm Dave Carlson. Bye for now.
comes in in front. He's too good. But the real Kingston Town's going to street them. It's history at Randwick. Superimpose has come from last. Back to back Cox plates for the champion man's sideline. But a champion becomes a legend. And that's 21 today. Hi, I'm Dave Carlson, and welcome to the second semi final of the Racing Wiz where we are just one step away from finding the wizard of Australian horse racing trivia. Our two contestants are competing against each other for a spot in our grand final show with $10,000 on the line. Time now to meet our contestants and first up from Bondi in Sydney, it's Andrew Mitchell. Welcome back to the Racing Wiz, Andrew. Thanks, Dave. You're a Sydney cider, but I believe you uh, went down to Melbourne for the Cup Carnival. Yeah, went to Derby Day, which is always a great day. How was it? Did you win a bit? Ah, uh, Nikita, Faulkner, okay, but the ones in between, not so good. Okay, well, we won't mention those. No, no. Yeah. Exactly. Well, all the best tonight. Thank you. Okay, Andrew. Our second contestant tonight comes from Perth in Western Australia. It's Jason Lincoln. Jace, welcome back. Thanks, Dave. Now, Jason, as we found out in the heats, uh, you are a steward in racing and harness racing. Now, I know you're not allowed to bet. Let's talk about harness racing. Sure. What's, your, what's the driver or the horse that really stands out for you? Oh, when you think West Australian harness racing at the moment, I think there's, there's only one horse, and it's on the Mighty Quinn. Um, so as far as the horses go, certainly him. But uh, the drivers, look, there's certainly the, the old school, Chris Lewis and Colin Brown are still there, but the young blokes like Hall and, and Woodley, yep. you know, they're the guys probably to look out for in the future. And the pacing cup coming up in January. Pacing cup coming up, and uh, obviously we're going to have a strong local representation with Quinny, yeah. Yeah, all the best to you tonight Thanks, in the Dave. racing wheels. Beautiful. Now, Andrew and Jason will go head to head tonight in the Racing Wiz and compete for these great prizes. Tonight's winner on the Racing Wiz will receive a $500 tab.com.au voucher. The four highest qualifying round winners progress through to the semi finals, where those winners will battle it out in the grand final of Series 1 of the Racing Wiz for the major prize of $10,000 in cash, courtesy of tab.com.au, Sky Racing and the Racing Wiz. Yes, that's right, you heard right, $10,000 heading the way of our eventual grand final winner. Well, first up in the Racing Wiz tonight, it's Horses for Courses. Our players have selected a racing category they think is their strongest. Ten questions to each player, 20 points for a correct answer, no penalty for an incorrect one. Well, Andrew, you've chosen Octagonal as your category. Are you ready for your ten yes, questions? Certainly. Question one. What was the first race Octagonal won as a four-year-old? Four-year-old. It was the Sorry, Underwood Stakes. Underwood stakes yes, How yes. many Group 1 races did Octagonal Ten. win? Ten is correct. Who rode Octagonal at his first official race start? Michael Evans. Michael Evans is correct. Who was the jockey on board Octagonal when he won the 1995 Cox Plate? Shane Dye. RS Dye, spot on. What race was Octagonal's first success at stakes level? Uh, the Todman. The Group 2 Todman Stakes, correct. Which three-quarter brother to Octagonal by Sir Tristram won the 1987 VRC Sires Produce? Um, well, what? It was Carpstad. Oh, Carpstad. The first time Octagonal failed to run a place was in which race at Mooney Valley? Um, the Mancato. Mancato, correct. Question eight. Which son of Octagonal won 11 Group 1 races and amassed more than $5 million in prize money? Black Flash, Lonro. Lonro is spot on. Which horse beat Octagonal in the 1996 Hobartville Stakes? Uh, nothing Like a Dane. Nothing Like a Dane is correct. And question number 10, Andrew. How many Group 1 races did Octagonal win as a four-year-old? Um, four. Four is correct. They are your 10 questions in Horses for Courses. So, well done to you. You have eight correct. Well, OK, now we are going to head to you. Jason, Kingston Town, you have chosen as your category. Are you ready for your I questions? Am. All right, question number one. How many times did Kingston Town race before he was gelded? Once. Once is correct. What weight did Kingston Town carry when second in the 1982 Melbourne Cup? 59 kilos. 59 kilos is correct. What was the first race Kingston Town won as a four-year-old? Expressway. Warwick Stakes. Which legendary Californian trainer prepared Kingston Town for a failed US campaign? Charlie Whittingham. Charlie Whittingham is correct. Which horse won the 1979 Caulfield Guineas on protest with Kingston Town finishing third? Runaway Kid. Runaway Kid is correct. 
which horse finished second to Kingston Town when he won his third Cox Plate in 1982? Grosvenor. Correct. What was the name of Kingston Town's dam? Ada Hunter. Ada Hunter is correct. Question eight, Jason. In how many states of Australia did Kingston Town win races? Four. Four is correct. Who rode Kingston Town to victory in the 1979 Peter Pan Stakes? John Duggan. Johnny Duggan is correct. And finally, question 10, Jason. Which horse won the 1982 Chelmsford Stakes in which Kingston Town's winning streak in Sydney came to an end? Rare form. Rare form is correct. Nine correct, 180 points. Well done to you, Jason. So let's take a look at the scoreboard. And at the moment, Andrew is on 160, Jason in the lead with 180. <laughs> Our last question in round one is, what's my name? Well, the answer could be horse or it could be human. First in with the buzzer gets to answer. If you get it wrong, your opponent gets the rest of the clues. So there are 50 points up for grabs. Uh, we'll check the buzzers, Andrew. It is in fine working order. And Jason. Excellent. Here is your...